artificial intelligence will transform what it is to be a human or what it is for humans to relate to each other. Almost every aspect of human existence is about to change. That raises a number of ethical and moral questions about how we think this technology ought to be used. The only experts there are on moral and ethical questions are philosophers. We've been working on those questions for about two millennia. So if you want to know anything about that, come talk to the philosophers. I think the biggest danger when thinking about AI is to model what it is to have a mind and a cognitive life on humans. We already know that things that are not humans, like non-human animals, have a cognitive, emotional, and rich life. And so what we need to do now is try to think, can we take our model from there, abstract away, and see whether we can find something similar in an artificial structure, like, for example, a large language model. Whether we can do that or not is a deeply philosophical question that we philosophers are working very hard to answer. What's amazing about that movie is that it happened 10 years ago, but now we're already seeing something incredibly similar to what Spike Jones imagined in that movie. There are people who have incredibly close relationships with artificial intelligence. They're called AI companions. People want to marry them, they divorce their partners. So these are not questions about whether it's possible. It's actually happening. I think if we reflect on the AI companions, they're always available. They're incredibly patient. They're never in a bad mood. They never need to sleep. They never ask for anything in return. One thing that might very easily happen and that you can see in that movie by Spike Jones is you start getting less interested in human relations because the relationship with the AI is so powerful and so deep. A super intelligent AI that can also potentially be super powerful is incredibly dangerous because it could obliterate humanity. We have basically four ways to avoid being obliterated by a super intelligent AI. One of the ways in which we can survive is that we find there's a technological ceiling. We just are unable to create super powerful AI. Another is we are able to build them, but we decide not to. That's another option. A third option is we create super powerful AI, but we align it perfectly with our interests and goals. So they'll never do anything dangerous towards us. A fourth option is they have their own goals and desire. They're super powerful, but we manage to control them. The probability of humanity surviving AI can be calculated from the probability of one of those four stories that I just told you about. Yeah, we have a one-year MA program called AI Ethics and Society. And uh, what we explore in that program is the social implications of AI technology, the ethical and moral implications, the legal implications, the way it affects your business, the way that it affects political development. So you get a very, very broad picture of the large-scale effects on, on AI now and in the future.